Right. So we were trying to understand how Cisco IOS can be used to configure uh, as per our expectation. A router needs configuration. A router needs routes. To get the routes and the routing table, we need to do a lot of things. So one of the thing is we need to provide IP address to the interface. Um, but that will only provide information about the connected network. But in order to know the network which is in remote, we need to enable routing protocols. So those things are coming later. Now, today, let's see what is uh, Telnet and how to enable it. Telnet is remote logging, meaning you are able to see the device in the in the remote in the distance. Um, without going there, you will be able to bring it down here. That's why we call this telnet. Tel means remote net through network. You you are able to see the remote device. It needs authentication because you know uh, when we tell that someone that someone will check whether we are presenting ourselves to the right person. How it knows by checking the credentials. So when we set the password and and when someone now telnets to this device, the device will look for the password. If the password is correct, then it provides the telnet service. Telnet is one of the service that every operating system provides. You see, to identify what service to provide, it look for the port number. When someone is telnetting, for example. Hey, are you example, writing something? Oh, okay, I've, I've seen it. Um, pencil moving, but I didn't see any yeah. writing. Okay. Okay. okay, now I write. When A is telnetting to, let's say this is a router, when A is telnetting to router one, by using the address configured here, router one is going to ask for the password. When A provides the password correctly here, then router reveals itself to A. So router not only can provide a telnet service like this, it can also provide SSH, it can be a HTTP server, it can be a TFTP server, meaning there are various services that can run on this router, the router can provide, for which the port number is used to differentiate the services. For example, when I tell it from here, what happens is the source port number will be a random port number, let's say 5555. The destination port number is going to be 23. 23 is a number, is the number which is reserved for the service called Telnet. 23 TCP. In transport layer, we have UDP as well as TCP. Telnet needs TCP 23. So, when, when the router receives the packet, it, look, it looks for this port number, it is 23. Then the router understands that A is looking for 
a remote service. He wants the router to reveal itself. If this is 80 instead of 23, what does this mean? A wants the web page HTTP 80. Twenty three Telnet twenty two SSH twenty twenty one twenty twenty one FTP four forty three Earlier it was called as HTTPS, but now it is called as TLS, Transport Layer Security, TLS. TLS or HTTPS, both are same. Nowadays every web page is TLS. The difference between TLS and HTTP is HTTP is not secure, no encryption. TLS, the other name is HTTPS. It's, it's encrypted, it's secure. For example, now I'm talking to you. This is not TLS or HTTPS. This is UDP, a protocol, real time protocol. Let's see the port number for this. What I'm, what we are using now, as I'm communicating to you now. This Google application, using which I'm talking to you uses see all UDP RTCP RTCP stands for real time let me stop this real time transfer control protocol it uses UDP you see user datagram protocol the port number is three four seven eight UDP. See all the packet, the port number is 3478. So this is the port number for Google Hangout calls. Now, let me, let me now try to open up a page. Let me try another one. Okay. Now, if you see, I'll stop this. You'll see a lot of TLS packet. See, these are all TLS packets. And in this, see, transfer layer security, TLS. And you see, hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP. It's an encrypted version of HTTP, TLS. And now if you see the port number here, the destination port number is 443. And I want to show you that this is Google.
All right, again, TLS transfer layer security. If you go down, you can see it's Google. I was trying to open Google. And I was also trying to open Yahoo. But the page didn't open, it was trying. It says, Bangalore, India, Northeast Data Network Private Limited, whatever. Um, let's see this one. This is also Bangalore. Akami International BB. What is this one? Microsoft. Okay, so in short, what I want to say is there's a port number always involved. Depending on the service, the number is different. If you are expecting Telnet, then it is 23. You don't need to memorize all, but at least this much you need to know. All right, uh, so there's a protocol called DNS, which uses 53, but it's not TCP, it's UDP. Right, so some protocols, you know, we should know by heart because we we may be tested during the interview. Yeah. Now I'm going to take a router like this and a computer like this, put an IP address to the router, put an IP address to the computer, and I'll try telnetting to this router and then see what happens. I'll open Packet Tracer. A router. And a computer. I'm connecting to F00. So, the IP address on F00 is going to be 10.0.0.1 and the mask is 255.0.0.0 which means class full. This is not classless. Classless is when I go beyond this 8 bits. 8 bit only gives you 255.0.0.0. We'll, if you don't know about these things, we'll be discussing these things in coming class. Now, when I put another 255 instead of the second zero, then it is classless. Or anything other than this, 255.0.0.0 is classless for 10. In the previous class, I said number between 1 to 2, 126, 1 to 126 is class A. 10 is in between 1 to 126. So it's class A. This is the default mask. And on the PC, I'm going to provide IP address like 10.0.0.2. The mask will be 255.0.0.0. So this need to be in same subnet. This is also 10. This is also 10. The only difference is this is dot two. That's the unique identification given to this device. And this is dot one, which is given for this interface, this device. Let me let me start from this PC in the left. You need to click on this IP configuration, put the IP address 10.0.0.2. 
And when you press the tab button, the subnet mask will be filled, auto-filled. The gateway is nothing but the address of the router. The address of the router is going to be 10.0.0.1. Earlier we learned why we need gateway. Gateway is to take you to different networks. In the earlier class videos, if you see, there we learned what is subnet mask, what is gateway, what is IP address. So this is the gateway address, router's address. The router which will take you to various other remote destination. To verify, go to command prompt and type IP config. Here we go, we got the IP address subnet mask and the gateway. Now, I'm going to configure 10.0.0.1 as the IP address on the router. Let me go here. For security reasons, all these interfaces will be in a shutdown state. That's why you see a red color there on the router. We need to say no shutdown to bring it up. Whereas on the switches, they are always up by default. But on the router, I need to go under F00. Bring it up. As soon as I hit enter, you will see it turning green. It turned green. Now I put IP address 10.0.0.255. Done. Now I would like to give a name for the router. Not mandatory, but it is a good practice. I'm going to name it as house name is Mysore, <laughs> uh, router one, router one, R1. Fine, now what is next? I want to save this, copy running configuration to startup configuration. It is asking, hey, are you sure you want to save? Uh, and we want to give this name. It recommends a name. Uh, for me, yeah, I'm okay. okay. Now, when you check this routing table, you will see a route, show IP route. You see, automatically a route is coming, saying 10 network is connected via Connected on the interface F00. Connected on this interface F00, fast Ethernet 00. It's a directly connected network. Did I do this? No. When I gave an IP address to an interface like this, the network of this interface, see, this is IP address 10001 is IP address, but the network is 10000. So the network of this IP address is what you will see. And that slash eight stands for this mask, 255. Only eight bits can give you 255. Now, what does this mean? This means that a router knows where is the network. It is in this direction, F00 direction. If you try pinging 10.0.0.2, which is your computer, you will be able to reach. When I get exclamatory mark, look at this. Other five packets, four packets were successful. But what happened to the first packet? First packet is lost because, you see, out of five, only four were successful. 80%. When I try again, you will see all five are successful. Yeah, for the very first time, when you try pinging, router will not know the MAC address of the computer 10.0.0.2. For, ten, for 10 10.0.0.2, you need MAC address to communicate. Just with the IP address alone, you cannot communicate. We learned that in the data link layer, a source and destination MAC address need to be assigned. 
So how will you know the destination MAC address? Through ARP. So for ARP to get the response, it took some time. That's why you lost this ping ICMP packet. Ping uses ICMP. Ping uses a protocol called ICMP. So what really happened is, when I tried pinging from here to this guy, it is ICMP trying to deliver the packet to this computer. But to deliver the packet to this computer, router needs the MAC address. So the packet did not really go out from the router because the router also initiated another protocol, ARP, Address Resolution Protocol, which will do a layer two broadcast asking, hey, what's your MAC address, 10.0.0.2? It'll, it'll, it'll do a layer two broadcast. By the time this ICMP is getting timed out, you know, ARP needs to go and then get a response. If you go and type this command, show ARP, show ARP. You see, we did not give this. It says 10002, this is the MAC address. You know whose MAC address is this? This is the MAC address of that computer. In the run, it has discovered it. And and took this MAC address from the ARP table, it, it used it for the ICMP. And then it was successful ping. So the reason for we losing one packet in the one or two packets, the first time is the ARP table is not updated for the destination that you are trying to go. It takes time for learning the MAC address. Once the MAC address learned, only then it can be used for pinging. Now let's, let's go and check whether this MAC address matches with this computer. It must match. How do we check the MAC address? Same command, IP config forward slash. And now you see the MAC address ends with 3B1E. You see, 3B1E. We did not feed this information. It's ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol, which is a layer two protocol, discovered this. Okay, fine, now we are seeing the MAC address and we also saw the ping was successful. When I try pinging now one more time, you will know that still the R table is available. For last four minutes, it's, it's available. As a result, the ping is now without any loss, 100% is successful. Let me try pinging from this computer to the router. Now, before that, I want to show you the R table here. Here the command is ARP iPhone A. And you can see here the MAC address of the router. Because the MAC address of the router is already known. How it knows? Because the ping was coming from router, no? When, when ping was coming from router, this PC has learned the MAC address of the router. So this time when you ping, there won't be any loss. So the, the computer pings the router, router pings the computer. See, in, in Windows operating system, this is how the ICMP response is shown. Whereas on the router, it will be exclamatory mark. Just exclamatory mark. All right, now we, we are able to ping only. We want ice. We want uh, telnet now. We want telnet. 
ping is possible because the Windows operating system or the Cisco iOS operating system or any operating system other than firewall, even on firewalls, you know, there is no, no restriction. So what I'm trying to say is the operating systems will be readily available to respond if you're pinging. When I ping, immediately router says, yeah, here I am. You say, reply from 10.001. I'm here. Yes, I'm here. So the PC is sending an echo packet, ICMP echo, and you got ICMP replies. Here I am. Which is readily available. The devices are ready to respond, but Telnet is not like that. You see, when I try Telneting to the same address, 10.0.0.1, it says, uh, sorry, you see, I'm able to reach, but the foreign host, who is the foreign host here? The router. The router is not supporting not readily available for this service called Teldet. For ICMP, router was ready. It responded very well. But when you tell that router says, mm -mm, I'm not configured to provide you this service. So I'm closing. So unless you configure router to support Telnet, you will not be able to tell it. How do you enable Telnet on the router? Like this. You need to type line VTY and then you need to give a number. Listen, in our topology here, we have just one computer. What if I have a switch here and I have many other computers connected? So there are many computers connected and anyone may be trying to tell it, not only this guy. More than one can try logging into the router. So now router needs to decide whether to allow all of them or some of them or one of them. How do we determine that? When I put zero only, I mean only one can tell net. When I say zero, two, it means zero, one, and two, which means three people can simultaneously tell net. Three people can simultaneously tell net. So how many can tell net this router? We decide by, uh, by putting number here. Do not put big number. It will support up to 15, 0 to 15. How do I know that? Put question mark, you will find it. You see 0 to, I mean 0 is default means very first connection. So you can go from 1 to 15 now. What does that mean? 16 people can simultaneously log in. But more people you allow, more confusion. How will you allow 16 people to configure one router? Not good idea. So when you have only two engineers in your office, why is there need for allowing more than two? So try to keep this number as low as possible. Uh, Cisco says, do not go more than this, 0 to 4, do not go more than this. Okay, no problem. Let's keep it low. I'm saying uh, 0 and 1. So which means only 2 at a time can tell it. Which 2? Any 2. 
So if you will have a switch and more computers. See, for me, this port numbers F00, F06, all are displayed very well. Uh, if you don't see in yours, the reason is you need to go to option and go to preference and, and you need to say this, always show the port label. You need to make a check mark here. If you do that, then um, it will be always visible for you. Otherwise, you need to move the mouse to see that. Anyway. Let's say we got IP address like 10.3 here. Uh, this So when we have IP addresses, assume that I have already configured IP address on these computers. Now, only any two of these computers can tell net to the route. Because I have said zeroth connection and the first connection. Zeroth virtual connection, VTY virtual terminal emulation, any one. Sorry, any any two, zero and one can log in. Here you go. Let's 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 put on some IP address here on this computer. I'm going to say ten zero zero three. Gateway is ten zero zero one. For testing, you know, I'll just. Uh, Give IP address to another one more computer. Let's say I'll give this ten zero zero four. Another one. Now, we have almost five computers with the, uh, not five, four, with the IP address starting from two, three, four, uh, I think five, five computers. Two, three, okay, four computers. Two, three, four, and five. Four computers. Sixth one, assume that I have already given. Now, I'm going to tell it from this computer to the router. Telnet 10.0.0.4. Even this time, not allowing. The reason is I have not given the password yet. See, earlier when I was trying to tell it, it was saying close by the foreign host. This time it is not saying foreign host. It's not saying close by foreign host. It's slightly different from previous time. Previously when I was checking here,
it was so enclosed by foreign host. Okay, even now it's come a little bit. Now, the reason is this one. I had to put the password here. Under line with UI, I have to say a password that you should use is, let's say Cisco one, two, three. So whoever telnets, because they're coming from remote and needs authentication, because they're coming from remote, what if some, some attacker comes in? If he can telnet and take control of my router, he can change all the configurations. Not good. So we need to authenticate and then allow them inside. If they give the right password, then they are genuine. Um, okay. So we have already enabled Telnet. They're only this much. Enabling Telnet is only this much. You need to just uh, get into the line VTY and say what the password needs to be tested, checked. As a result, if I now go to 10.0.0.4 and try telnetting, oh, I think there is an issue with the ping. 10.0.0.1. Okay, now it's ping. Telnet 10.0.0.1. Now it says, uh, provide the password. Who is asking, you know, right now is, it's the, it's the router asking me. The router is saying, give me the password. And I say, C-I-S-C-O, one, two, three, go. You're in, you see, inside the computer, PC, you're able to see the router. And it also shows the host name, you see, router one, R1. Now let me go to console and change the name and see, you will see, it will reflect there. I'm changing the name here, host name, test. Now you go there to the computer, where you were. Earlier it was R1, now, now if I hit enter, <laughs> you see, you do change there, it impacts here. Likewise, if I do change here, it will impact there. Let us now go to the router. Hey, router. Can you show me who has telneted you? The command is show users. It says someone called 10.0.0.4 by using VTY zeroth connection has logged in for last 25 seconds. Now 38 seconds. Who? It's 10.0.0.4. See how clearly it says who has telnetted. Now let's try telnetting from another computer. I'll tell it from this 10.0.0.3. Cisco one two three. I'm in. Now go and ask the router. Hey router. It says uh, there are two people. One is ten zero zero four for last one minute and ten second. The other one is ten zero zero three. Ten zero zero three has logged in. So two. Oh, see. First connection is zero connection. Next connection is first connection. How many we have allowed? I remember we said zero one. Did I say zero one or zero two? Yeah, zero one. So now zero is also used. One is also used. Let's try now from here. When I try from here, I can't same rock close by foreign host, close by foreign host, you see. The reason is there is no session possible because the session IDs are only two, zero and one. It's already in use. 
So when will this be able to tell net? Two ways. One, I have to increase the VTY, VTI, VTY number. If I make this as two, then it is possible. Or one of this user, either this guy or this guy, needs to stop the telnet. So let me go and stop the telnet from one of this computer here. On router four, I'm saying control X. or exit just exit i have terminated the telnet session from 10.0.0.4 now go and check the router 10.0.0.4 is no more which means zeroth line is available now first line is used but zeroth line is available let's tell it from here look at this it's asking for the password using that zeroth line and I'm giving the password CISEO123. I'm in. Now go and check who has logged in. Show users. It says the zeroth line is now given to 10.0.0.2. So what do we see here? We see the source from where the telnet is coming. The administrator of the router who is sitting with this console can say uh, for last six seconds 10.0.0.2 is, is logged in and for two minutes and 34 seconds 10.0.0.3 is logged in. Now if administrator wants to know the name of the user, if he wants to know the user's name then I need to enable username and password listen how, let's see how to do it I'm on the router I'm going to say in the global mode this is called global mode right global configuration mode here I say username uh, let's say J password pass and another username Maggie Password, pass. Now, let us say line VTY zero one. And I have to say login local. What does this mean? This means that use the local database username and password for authenticating. That's the meaning of this. We did not type anything earlier. We simply gave the password earlier. We did not say anything like whether to use local log authentication uh, database or we didn't say anything. When you don't say anything, it uses this password which you have configured under line VTY. But when you say login local, it will ignore this password it won't, it won't ask for this password. It will ask for a username and the password because the local database has got both username and the password. So we have to say login local so that, now you see, I'll exit from here. I'll also exit from the other computer. I've exited and now you go and check the users. Um, okay, show users. You see, there is no user. There is no telnet. Now, let me tell it from this 10005. Telnet. look at this it is not asking me password this time it is asking me for the username and I'm going to say buggy password is pass I mean now you go here and router 
and ask user. It clearly says this time Maggie is logged in from this computer. It clearly says the user was logged in. Now let's go to another computer, maybe 10.003, and I do the tell it again. And this time I'm saying the user is J, password is plus. Now if you go down here to the router and ask who are logged in, it says J is logged in from this computer 10.003, and Maggie is logged in from 10.005. You see, this is more um, informative. Not only shows the IP address, it also shows who has logged in. So you will know who has logged in and who has done the changes. <laughs> So what I have shown you is how to enable Telnet with only the password. And the other one is with both password as well as the username as well as the password. Hmm. Now, what is next? Next is what if I want to configure the router from the remote? You see, I have already Telneted from here. I can see the router. But when I try typing enable command, It's supposed to take me to a privilege mode, but this time, mm -mm, not allowed. Usually, when we say enable, it will show you the privilege mode on the router. But look at this. On the router, when you say enable, it immediately takes you to the privilege mode. You can type config T. But on this computer where you have, we have telnated, from where we have telnated to the router, this computer clearly shows that router. But when I try to <clears throat> go inside to do some verification or for, for some configuration, not allowing me. Because it is remote, it needs second level of verification. It wants second level of verification. Before sending you to privilege mode, it wants to make sure one more time it is you. Because the first password may be stolen. So second password, if I ask, and if second password is also good, which means it's genuine. So two level of authentication. Now, how do we set this privilege level password? For that, we need to go to router and, and um, when I'm in the global mode, I have to say enable password. And give any password. I'm going to say um, Uh, P at the rate five five. This is the password. Now let's go back to the computer where we were doing enable earlier. Last time when I was typing enable, it says no password set, but this time it will not say no password set. It says uh, give me the password. <laughs> So I'm showing you that if you are telnetting, you need to do two levels of authentication. You need to you need to provide another password. So here we gave capital P at the rate of five five. Boom. I'm inside. Likewise, from here, I say enable it as again password. To see the privilege mode, I have to type password, capital P, at the rate, 5, 5, boom. I can see the privilege mode. Now I can configure even from here. You see, I'm going to change the host name. Host name is R1 again. You see the name changed here, not only here, you go router, 
and see here, see the name change here. Not only here, here, mm, what is, no, even here it has changed, everywhere it has changed. So to do any configurations from the Telnet mode, from the Telnet devices, you need the second level of password. Two level authentication. Right. <clears throat> now, where are we? We learned how to enable Telnet. We have also Telnet. I'll say copy, run, start. Now exit. The first level password, it is, it is not, it's not asking because there's a console one. But when I type enable, it is asking password because we have set enable password. That's not only for Telnet, it is even for console. If it is set, it will ask. The password is capital P, same password, at the rate, 5, five. I mean, so what I'm trying to show here is when I when I do console, it is not asking username or password. But if you wish to have username and password, then what I have to do is wait. Let me first log in. P at rate five five. Now what I need to do is listen carefully. I need to say line console zero. Because we want username and password for the console. Then you need to say login local here. Login local here. Now, let me save, copy, run, start. And then exit from here. Mm -mm. You know what is this one? I was typing exit, but I mistakenly typed twice T. TT. So the router do not know this command called EXITT. So it is broadcasting and asking, hey, anyone knows about this EXITT? Actually, no one is going to respond for this. So it will time out till the time you need to wait. This is actually looking for EXITT. It is asking so everyone do uh, anyone knows about this command. And when no one responds for 60 seconds, one minute it will time out and come out. Mm, now it is. If you don't like to wait like this, I don't like to wait like this. If you don't like to wait like this, you need to say, no IP, sorry, in the, in the line console, in the line console, line console. No IP, no, no, sorry, not here. Here only, the global mode, you need to say no IP domain lookup. When you put this command, you don't need to wait anymore if you type commands wrong. You see, now I type EXITT, it immediately comes out. Exit. Copy, run, start. Again, I'm typing EXITT. See? It is not holding me. I don't need to wait. It's not sending to 255 now. Okay. Now, see, even for the console, I can use the same username and password that I was using for Telnet. I'm going to say, mm, money, password, pass. Uh, we are in, enable, capital P, at the rate, five, five, boom. We are inside. So, like Telnet, if you wish to use the username and password, for console, 
you need to simply go under the console mode and say login local right the reason why i was typing i no ip domain lookup is i do not want to wait when i mistakenly type something it puts me it holds me for for 60 seconds checking for that command which i mistakenly typed okay. so that's not the part of telnet okay so now if i make any mistake um, ex I I T T. I no need to wait. E X I I T T. I no need to wait. Earlier it, it used to hold me for sixty seconds. There's no IP domain lookup. Okay, so we have learned how to tell it two levels of password. If you are willing to come and figure from the remote computer. Even for the console, we have seen in the previous class, we also saw a banner. Let me put the banner now. Um, banner. During the login time, show this banner. Welcome. Please log in. All right, now copy, run, start. So let's test whether the banner is visible. Yeah, it says, welcome, please log in. I say J and the password is pass. J Y, I mean, and if I type uh, capital P at rate five five, I mean, show user. It says even the console who has logged in, J has logged in. Now let me go to ten zero zero three. This one here also J has logged in. Now let us exit from here. And tell it again and check whether the banner is shown. Yeah, even here the banner is shown. Welcome, please log in. And I'm going to say again user is J, password is pass. Capital P at the rate 55. Now, when I go to the router and check. I can see J is logged in for seven seconds on this computer with the banner. I tested even the banner. So today we saw how to enable Telnet with only password, with both username and password, uh, setting the number of connections, Telnet connections. Recommended is try to keep as low as possible. Maximum is up to 15, uh, means 0 to 15, means totally 16 connections. Even for the console, you can have the password as well as username and password. For Telnet, double layer of authentication is mandatory. And show users the command where you come and verify on the router who has logged in. Right, so what we are going to see in the next class is how to crack this password. See, I have set this password and I'm saving copy, run, start. Okay, now where is this password is getting saved? Where the passwords are getting saved? to NVRAM, that's the, that's the clue. How to crack the password. See, it is in the NVRAM, the passwords are saved. 
and and I forgot the password as you. I forgot the password. So if I forgot the password, to crack the password, I need to access the NVRAM somehow so that I can I can go and see the password that I have given in in NVRAM it is saved so that I can I can know the password and I can come and put the password here so we need to we need some access to NVRAM how is that possible if I'm not able to log in if I'm not able to log into the device how I'll be able to access NVRAM That is what we are going to learn tomorrow. So we are going to see two ways in which you can log in when you forget on the password. First way, you go to NVRAM and see what password is given and then come back here and use it. Second way is Go to NVRAM and change the password and come and use the password that you have changed. The second one is needed if the password is encrypted. Listen, right now the passwords are not encrypted. It's the username J, password is uh, pass. And then enable capital P at the rate 55. Right now when I type show run, I can see all the password. Uh, enable password is this, and username is this, password is this. I can see everything. This is the login we created, the banner. You see line console also uses the local database for authentication. Line VTY uses local database for authentication. This is going to be ignored because we have a local database authentication. Earlier, we did not have login local underline VTY. We were using this as the login password. I changed it later. I said use the local database. When I say use the local database, login local, it will look for this one. This is what local database. Now, if these passwords are encrypted, how will you know the password? So you need to change the password. For that, you need to access NVRAM again. So we'll do and we'll see those things in the next class. Saying copy, run, start. Um, and we'll use the same topology tomorrow for cracking password. We'll use the same topology so that we no need to type these IP addresses one more time again. And really, I'll forget this password. I really, even if I don't uh, remember tomorrow, I'll still manage to know it. And you will also see me how I do that. You know, that's what coming next. Uh, any question from today's class you have? No, sir. Okay. Try this no, in your home. Yeah, thank you, Marika. See you tomorrow. Have a wonderful